Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman, and welcome back to Topics in Theoretical Physics. Today I want to branch off a little bit and do some mathematics. I just finished this MOOC on edX. It's a really wonderful MOOC. It's taught by some Russian professors. They do really advanced graduate level sort of material. This one was a prequel to one of their earlier courses on complex analysis with physical applications. And um, this one was uh, quite instructive as well. So I highly recommend this course. It's on edX. It's by MISISX 1.1X Complex Analysis. And in uh, this video and the following series of videos, I want to um, present a sort of tutorial and a solution of this problem. Um, it, uh, I made a lot of mistakes in this problem and I, uh, I thought the professors were wrong, but they actually turned out to be right. I, I have to apologize to them again, but I, I did it carefully and now I want to do it on this video. So here is the problem. It's, it's called problem for integral of a multi-valued function. So we have this function on the complex plane, f of z, is 1 divided by 1 minus z cubed to the 1 third power minus z. And it's analytically continued along this contour, which is shown in this diagram. This is the complex plane. And the contour starts here, crosses a branch cut, but it's analytically continued, and then goes off to infinity on another branch line. And the regular branch of this function is fixed at the beginning of the contour by some asymptotics. And basically it's f of rho e to the minus 2 pi i over 3, which is this line. So this is like this reference point at infinity is defined by this, minus 1 over 2. Stretch this out a little bit. Minus 1 over 2 rho e to the 2 pi i over 3 and rho is like goes to infinity, it's much greater than 1. And the problem is to compute this contour integral, the integral of f of z dz. Now let me start by saying that there's a very easy way to do this, which I missed, and a very hard way to do it, which I figured out. I'm going to present the hard way first, but just remember that that's not the way to solve this problem. There is a very easy way, but sometimes in complex analysis, you get all messed up with poles and branch points and other things like that. You like, you don't focus. So for me, the first thing I said was, wait a minute. If this goes like minus 1 over rho, when I integrate to infinity, it's going to be logarithmic di divergent. And I, th I thought to myself, well, maybe the uh, integral along this part will cancel the integral along that part. And I said to myself, I don't know, but that's the first thing I got to check. And you should check it. And it will turn out that this integral part is logarithmically divergent, and so is this, but they cancel exactly. It's a little bit like a principal value integral. I don't know if you remember your principal value integrals, but if, if you have something like this and something like this, this part over here and this part over here will cancel if you take you know, if you integrate from like minus infinity to epsilon, and then plus the integral from epsilon to plus infinity of the other side. But you've got to make sure that you use the same epsilon here and there, because neither one of these is absolutely convergent. So you've got to like take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. This is the principal value of an integral. Here we have the opposite. We have something like, let's say, an integral to r say 1 plus um, the integral from minus r to minus 1. And both of these are divergent, but if we take the limit as r goes to infinity, it will end up being equal to 0. So that's one of the things I'm going to establish as I solve this problem. That was the first thing that hit my mind and bothered me. And I wasn't wrong about that, but Now, the, um, the second thing I was thinking about was, well, and this is where I was wrong, I said, I can't close the contour, 
And if I close it this way, I'm going to have a lot of poles and branch points plus the integral. And if I close it this way, I won't have them. But the integral, it's not zero. It's not like the usual complex analysis where you close it on the circle at infinity and that contributes nothing. Here it contributes something because it goes as 1 over z. But that turns out to be the easy way to do it. I'll get back to that later. So I think in any uh, complex analysis problem, the first thing you want to do, let's figure out where the branch points and the poles are. Okay. Well, the branch points are easy, um, as you when you, as we were taught in this course, and as you most of you probably know, a branch point will be where the um, the multi-valued function is either zero or a pole. Now, in this case, the only thing that makes f multi-valued is this piece right here. So our focus, I'm going to define h of z is equal to 1 minus z cubed to the 1 third. And I'll also define an auxiliary function. Sometimes I'll need it. g of z is equal to 1 minus z cubed. And this obviously factorizes as minus 1 minus e to the minus 2 pi over 3. times 1 minus, I'm sorry, I need a z times z minus 1 times z minus e to the 2 pi over 3. Because these are the three roots of this polynomial. And if I wrote it as z cubed minus 1, I wouldn't have to add that minus sign. So, this is the focus of most of the first couple of videos. I want to find out where the branch points and the pole at the branch points are on this function because this is the uh, multi-valued part. We'll figure out the poles of f of z later, but first let's get a handle on this part. So the branch points are where this is zero. So we just have to solve z. I've already done it. z cubed equal one. And we know that z is equal to 1 or e to the plus or minus 2 pi i over 3. Okay, now let's solve for the poles. The poles will be when the denominator vanishes. So we want for the poles, these are the branch points, Now for the poles, we need 1 minus z cubed to the 1 third equals z. So this implies, this is a necessary condition, but it won't turn out not to be sufficient. This implies 1 minus z cubed equals z cubed. Two z cubed equal 1. So z is equal to <coughs> excuse me 1 of the, over the cube root of 2 times e to the minus 2 pi over 3 <coughs> So, I'm not saying that these are the poles, but this is, we certainly have to have this in order to have a pole. And on the diagram that I started with, you can see that everything is sort of fairly nice and symmetric. These are the branch lines, the branch cuts over here at 1, e to the minus 2 pi over 3, and e to the 2 pi over 3 are the branch points. And the poles are actually a little bit inside. I think 1 over the cube root of 2 is about 0 
So they're on the branch lines and they're a little bit inside the poles. Okay. Now, if you were to substitute these things back into that expression, you would find that it depends on how we evaluate that cube root function, whether we have a pole or not. So it turns out what we'll find in the next couple of videos is that, yeah, these are all poles, but they're on different sheets. We expect with a cube root function, we'll have three sheets for the Riemann sheet or three branches for the function f of z. In fact, we do. And each of these poles will be on a different sheet. And what's crucial is, because of the way we chose these asymptotics, it will turn out that while we, you would think this pole, this would be a pole, in fact, it's not on the sheet one. We're going to define sheet one as where the thing starts. Sheet or branch. Let me write that down. All right, first. So it, turn, it will turn out that each of these poles is on a different sheet. They're not where we expect them, but it will work out real good because we'll find out that on the starting contour, we can go right through this because this is not on the first sheet. This is on a different sheet. And then we'll find out that we can go right through this because this is on a different sheet. And, and now we're on the second sheet and that we're going to find this is on a different sheet. So we don't really, residues and poles won't figure in the answer. So I will um, come back in the next video um, and we'll start doing some more uh, computations. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.